Hey y'all, what's going on? This is uh, Super Trooper Camo here. And I have a review or a video here of my Motorola HT1250. Let's turn it on here. This is a great radio, super radio, very nice. Uh, especially for any ham radio operator. Uh, as that's what I am, I'm a ham radio operator. Um, this is a great conventional radio. Uh, it, it holds 128 channels with 8 zones uh, and total of 16 channels per zone which is you know pretty good uh, let's take a quick view around the radio here um, your battery and I'm sorry if the lights not bright enough in here uh, please let me know if it's not but this is your battery right here you've got your plastic belt clip there which is the I don't think that's the standard belt clip that's a nice big belt clip which is the one I prefer I've got a small one you got your Motorola name right there uh, here on your side you've got your accessory port connector audio thing uh, right there for your lapel mics programming cables things of that nature and what else on the front you have on mine I've got a limited keypad as you can see then I've got you get a display there you got your speaker here on the top, you've got your emergency button, which is right there. Emergency button. You've got an LED light, which should be right. I don't know, you, you can't see it, but uh, it's there. And you've got your channel selector knob. Then you've got your volume up on and off knob here. Uh, for me, I operate on 2 meters, which is 144 through 148 megahertz. Uh, also known as VHF. And for that, I have the stock Motorola VHF whip antenna here. That's it right there. So, anyway, that's it right there. Um, I'll go through. I'll go through the different channels here. Um, it's a really good radio. It has great audio. Uh, I'm fixing to get to the cons of this radio. Just going through the different uh, channels here. This is, uh, Station WX as you can hear, broadcasting in Shreveport on 162.4 megahertz. Here's a look at local weather conditions as of midnight. At the top of the hour, light rain was falling in Shreveport. Uh, okay, so you can hear it. It's got it's got really great audio, very loud. A uh, feature on this radio, you've got your signal bar up there. It's also also alphanumerically display there with a battery gauge. It's also got a clock on it, but you can't really see it here in the video, but it's up in here. Let's go back to channel one. Um, what else? Let's go to your menu. Uh, for some reason on my radio, it's not, it doesn't have all the features enabled for some reason, which can be done, I guess, in the programming, and I'm fixing to get this one programmed again, or updated. Uh, some of the channels have been updated, or the repeaters have been updated with the PL tones. So I've got to take it in and get programmed, unfortunately. But, anyway, um, you got your system scan, you got audio tones, let's turn it up a little bit. Uh, you've got repair talk around, utilities, zone, program list, and system scan. System scan, you can turn that on and off if you want to. Then uh, audio tones, all that's on mine is tone disable and keypad tones. And that's it. I don't know why, but that's all it's on there. You have repair talk around, which doesn't do nothing for me. So you got utilities, you got power level, clock, software version, and that's it on utilities. You got zone, you can change zone. I've only got two zones on this one enabled right now. We'll go zone two here in a minute. You got program list, that's scan list, and that's it. Nothing else. Then uh, you go up, you got system scan, and that's it. Uh, let's go to zone two. Um, not only, I've also got, um, for scanning, I have the uh, local fire department uh, VHF analog frequencies, which I'll show you here. 
it, I have it set not to transmit. It will not transmit, which is good, of course. Uh, we'll go through different channels here. Um, it's a really nice radio. Uh, as I've said before. Okay. And then, of course, that's all I'm programmed. Which I'm fixing to get all that, like I said, programmed up. And uh, some stuff updated. But I also use this as, as a scanner. Um, I like monitoring the fire and police department. Which is why I've got this one programmed with the fire and police receive only frequencies. So we'll go back to zone 1. Okay. So. Uh, we'll go to the pros and cons of this radio before I stop the video. Um, pros about this radio. It's not too heavy, not too light. It's fits just about in the palm of your hand. It's this is a straight analog uh, HT1250. You can get them an LS an LS Plus, which is a I think it's a trunking capable radio. Uh, this radio you can get multiple accessories for it. It's very heavy duty. I live and work here on a farm, and uh, I've dropped this radio multiple times. Uh, in the mud, I've dropped it everywhere. Uh, I've dropped it on tile, and uh, I've dropped it on tile floors. I've dropped it on concrete floors. I've dropped it in the dirt. I've dropped it everywhere, and every single time, it does not fail to you know work. Um, so I definitely suggest it for a volunteer firefighter or any, anything industrial, um, you know, like construction, on-site communications, warehouse use. Anything of that nature that requires a good heavy duty strong radio but does not require any form of digital or trunking type thing. Um, what else? That's really it on the pros about this radio. It's a great radio for ham radio operators who are don't go out of town very much and don't need a amateur radio but need a more professional type radio, which is me. I don't really use amateur radio equipment. All I use is Motorola. I do not use any of the amateur stuff. I mean, I've got an Icom, I've got a uh, Yaesu Vertex Standard, and a, now I've got a old Rayo Shack HTX10 for 10 meters. But other than that, I've got all Motorola equipment. That's all I use for 2 meters and 70 centimeters, 440. But um, great heavy duty equipment. I've got a Motorola Saber, which I definitely suggest a Motorola Saber to any ham radio operator. Um, anyway, the cons about this radio. The, all, the, the thing that I've noticed about this radio, for some reason on mine, I don't know whether it's a common issue or not, but the battery for some reason, for some reason I guess it's loose from the radio or it jiggles and what's on your belt and, and you're wearing it on your belt, it tends to lose connection between the radio and the battery and the radio will go dead while it's on your belt and uh, you have to turn it off and turn it back on to get come to come back on so that's one of the cons about this radio like I said I don't know if it's a common problem or not but uh, it is on mine um what else I don't like I've got you know a public safety mic here I don't like the BNC to SMA connector that's on it I don't like that I prefer the Jedi public safety mic. It's just, you know, snap it on, snap it off. That's it. And the Jedi's are good radios. Uh, but they are old radios. They're 90's public safety equipment type industrial use. And are slowly, slowly going out of date. Now I've got a noise cancelling standard lapel mic here. For my HT1250, which is my first audio accessory I ever, ever had for it. I've had this radio for two years. Um, I don't like the accessory port there. As I'll show you here. I don't like how you had to screw. I like the fact that I don't like the fact that you, you had to screw to be able to use the mic or anything. You had to screw it on. Which I don't like that. I like to be able to on the fly, you know, real quick take an accessory off and uh, put another one on. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like the fact that you can't just accidentally rip it off or something. 
And with amateur equipment, you can accidentally take the mics off and stuff like that. And uh, on the Jedi mics, you can, you have the option to screw them in, but you can leave them uh, just regular clip on, clip off, which is why I like to. I don't know about y'all, but I like it. Um, another thing, the carry cases for these radios, they're not very uh, top quality. The leather carry cases they have available for this radio, I've had several uh, direct, directly from Motorola. And for some reason, they just don't last very long for me. I don't know why, but they don't. And uh, what else? Um, I prefer the nylon carry case for this radio. It just works better. But, uh, anyway, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, uh, I'll just show you some of the programmable buttons here. Uh, you've got your emergency button, which is disabled. Uh, a con about that is I don't like how it's a little hard to get to. And then, uh, you got your squelch here at the top. I've got program for squelch. That opens up the squelch here. See if you, can, you can hear it. Then uh, you get the scan button. Turn scan on. Press it again. It turns scan off. And when scan's on, the LED lights up green. Turn it off. It turns off. And you get your peer talk around button, which as I said before, don't do nothing. So um, recommendations for this radios and uh, for this radio. Volunteer, firefighter, ham radio operator, industrial, construction, on-site communications. I definitely recommend this radio for that. Uh, for a professional firefighting police department, no, I would not. It's just, it, it's a conventional radio. And every, everybody, unfortunately, is going to digital EPCO, which I don't like. I hate it, but, you know, it's moving with the time and everything. Uh, is an MTS 2000 better than this radio? Uh, parts wise, yeah, or no, parts wise, this radio is better than an MTS. You can't find as many parts for an MTS because they're getting older. Uh, audio wise, MTS is better. Channel wise, the MTS is better. It's got more channels. Uh, sensitivity wise, MTS is better in that range. Any of the Jedi, Jedi series is better in receiving, especially the HT 1000. Uh, this radio versus an HT-1000, this radio is better uh, for accessories wise to find parts for it. You can find parts for it because they're still made, they're still available for HT-1000 or not. But as you grow with the, the Jedi series radios, you go from HT-1000 all the way to an MTS-2000. You can use all the parts and accessories and batteries all together with all of them. From HT-1000 and HT-2000, JT-1000, MT-2000, and MTS-2000, you can use all the same parts with them, which is really cool. Uh, you can also use some of the Jedi parts with the XTS series, which is really cool. Um, with the HT Professional series, you can use a lot of the same parts with the same radios. Uh, you can use the same mics for the HT Professional series with all the... Uh, HT 750s, the HT uh, 1550s, I think. Uh, I don't know about the batteries with the HT 1550. I don't think you can use the same batteries with the HT 1550, which is, you know, HT 1550s. 1550 is a bigger radio on this one here. Um, would I suggest this over an HT 750? Yeah. If you if you want a radio that's got more than 16 channels. Then you'd go with an HT-1250 here, or MTS-2000. Uh, what else? The HT-750 versus an HT-1000. HT-1000 is better durability-wise and um, audio-wise. Uh, Parts-wise and availability-wise, HT-750 is better. So, y'all be the judge on that, on what you want to buy, but it's just my suggestion that the HT-1250 is a little bit better. Now... I'm not knocking the HT, or not, I'm not knocking the uh, XTS 3000, the XTS 5000, the XTS 2500. They're way better than this radio here, or I would consider them better. I've handled them before, and they're really great radios. Uh, we've had them 
get, you know, sink and grind.